my name is Nicole Royce. I am an artist, a curator, and a writer. I've been an artist since a young child. I had a really traumatic, chaotic childhood growing up, and it led me to art, which was painting and drawing. Um, and, <coughs> excuse me. Sure. And um, I continued that into college and got an art history degree, and I've just pursued painting on my own. My style is abstract and floral, and so I use a lot of texture, a lot of color, and it's just a lot of fun, and I enjoy it show that I did was at uh, Studio Tad, which was off of Grand, and um, with a really awesome owner, Tad Smith, and he welcomed me to his little gallery, and I'd never shown, and I was just at a college, and I showed about six paintings, and it was a lot of fun. I got to be around other artists, and I got to talk to people about art, and something I'd really never done. I've only, I'd kept my art private to myself, just showing my husband or my family, so it was really nice to show other people my work. The, the most positive experience that I received from that was I got to have feedback from so many different people about my work, which helped kind of help me guide my style, helped fine tune what I was working on in my head. It was able, I was able to translate that more into different canvases, so that was really great. I think the biggest thing that you have to remember when you're getting feedback from people is don't take it personal. They're looking at a painting or a photograph or a sculpture. They're not looking at you as a person. Yes, it's personal to you as an artist, but to them it's just a piece of art that they're looking at. So I think that's the biggest thing is just take it for what it is. It's a critique. You can take it or leave it. It's good or bad or great, but I, you know, it, it, it should only influence you in good ways, in my opinion, if you are confident in what you're doing. I slowly transitioned into doing stuff with like the city of Tempe and other venues like that ASU Gamage. And I learned how to put my portfolio together, to put my CV together and my statement, my bio, and then really present a nice body of work. I learned that you had to pick only a few images, five to 10 per se, rather than 20, to really show them what you were as an artist and what you were making at that time. So that kind of helped me hone my skills in terms of what I offered the gallery or wherever I wanted to show. It was really helpful. The more places I showed, I got a different sense of what people wanted, what they didn't want. And it also gave me a good sense of different layouts, of showing at a variety of venues. Because if you look at ASU Gamage or a restaurant, they're completely different. And that's a huge amount of space that you either have to fill or you have to not fill. So I learned a lot about layout and a lot about hanging and measuring and all that fun stuff that a lot of young artists don't really know nowadays. Because in a lot of galleries, they do it for you which is awesome, but as an artist, it kind of helps you put your work in perspective when you're looking at a wall. Okay, I can fit two or six paintings on this wall, and it won't overwhelm it, or it'll be, oh, this will be great. So it, it taught me a lot showing at a variety of venues. I became interested in curating after I graduated from ASU with an art history degree. Um, but I continued to work my regular day job, and I just kept painting and doing whatnot, and then I also began a family, and I... Tended to, I overbooked myself to the point where I had 60 shows in five years. A great resume, but I was really, really burnt out with my own artwork. And so that led me to want to reconnect with artists. And I never really had interacted with a lot of artists. Um, so I was like, and I'm in Chandler, so I wanted to kind of get back to where the arts were, which were in Phoenix and Scottsdale. So I approached them on Orchid and offered them my skills, which I have a business background and... I know how to market myself, and I know all these other things from being an artist, and I had a lot to offer, and they were excited, so I decided to join them on Orchid as the assistant curator. Um, as a curator, it, it's, it's not completely different from being an artist. The biggest thing is you're looking at a space, and then you're looking at the work that the artist offers you, and trying to put on the best show that you can for them in terms of representing their work, their style, and their, their point of view for that current series of work. And when you're an artist, you're only thinking about yourself. You're only thinking about the art that you're making. You're not thinking about the gallery or the space or the walls or what the people are going to think. That's the curator's job. The curator has to know how to present those things in the right way so you're reflected really well. It doesn't matter what kind of art you're making. It's really all in the representation of it. And then once it's up, it, then it's the artist's job to then step up and say, hey, I'm the artist, this is my work, and tell them about their story. So you kind of have to, it helps being, having both of those, I think. You know, I've been in both shoes, so I can sit there and say, okay, this is what you should do, or perhaps maybe try, rather than, no, this is the way you have to do it, blah, blah, blah. It's, you're flexible, 
because you can understand both sides rather than, oh, he's a young artist, he doesn't know, versus, okay, he's learning, let's see if I can teach them and help them get better and add to their portfolio and do all these other things. I think definitely curating has really changed my point of view of my own work. I've started a huge new series of work which I kind of stopped doing for a very long period of time. And now that I'm starting to get back into showing again, being part of group exhibitions, which I really was never a part of before, was really exciting and fun. And it also made me think, okay, how's my work going to look with all these other artists? Is it going to complement them? Am I going to stand out like a sore thumb? I was, I was more self-conscious, it seems. I was a little bit more, I don't know what, what's the right way of saying it. I was a little more, I guess not. I was more concerned that I was a good enough artist. I'm, I've become more of a perfectionist in that way, where, wow, that's a really great piece of art. Ooh, I don't think mine can, does mine stand up to that? How can I improve my work? You know, it's made me a little more, I guess, proactive with my work. So that's well, when you're approaching a gallery or a curator with your work, the biggest thing is that you have a website or a way that we can look at you. That's, that's huge. I, I get a lot of people that ask me, like, well, I can send you a few images. Well, I need to see more than just a few images. I need to see what types of work you've been doing and for over a little bit of a, you know, a decent period of time. It's really crucial to see that you've actually built a body of work, be it five pieces or 20, that there's a consistency there, that there's an actual series, something to show on my walls. I, I need more than five paintings, most galleries do. So it's really important that we see that you have more than just a, a few works of art. It also helps if you have a good cover, you know, a good CV, and a statement about who you are as an artist. And maybe a little biography is helpful, because I like to know a little bit about my artists when they're showing. I'll go and pick their brain and ask them, okay, so where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? Were you formally trained? All those things help a curator put the story together for the audience. So it's really, really crucial that you present yourself in a way that people can easily look at your work. If you don't have it, then it makes it quite, quite challenging, and it's really not professional. Well, the biggest thing is we're trying to build collectors, be it with through emerging artists to established artists. The biggest thing is we try to have a variety of price points. We have small pieces, we have medium size, we have large, and they're all in a variety of prices. And you can buy them, we'll work with you if you need to do like layaway or those types of things because we want the local artists to support it. It's important because if we don't, then they leave and maybe buy a painting or at least a print or something like that. The biggest thing is I'm passionate no matter what it's about. And, you know, I've been passionate about art my entire life. And it's just something that's really positive and uplifting and really just gives me a lot of joy. And being a mom and a wife is very fulfilling and very exciting. But I want to share those with my family as well. And so I do all these different art things with my kids. They're always in tow. And my husband is when he can be. And we go to museums, anything cultural, just to, to get the full experience of what life is about. It's really important. If you don't have art, you're missing out on a huge part of what your heritage is. This is where we live. We live in Arizona. So what's going on in Arizona? You have to look at a variety of things. It's not just one thing. And so that's why I do all the art stuff. You know, it's important. I talk to people, especially where I live in, in the East Valley, they don't know anything that's going on in the arts. So they read my column now and I write for East Valley Magazine. It's not much, but it's one more person reading about the arts, and I've gotten so many new people to come down to First Fridays and Third Fridays just to get out of their house and beat the heat and do something new. It's exciting, it's, it's empowering, and it's uplifting. I really enjoy it.